Welcome back in. We're up to 1944, almost three years since the last baseball cover due to World War II. As you can see, the price of the magazine has increased to 10 cents. This picture seems reflective of America at the time, with the small boy indoors. He's got his bat and he wants to play, but he's got the mumps. All his friends are going out to the ballpark to play a game. We were still a year or so away from World War II ending, so a lot of readers and subscribers probably understood what this boy felt like. The game is universal, but are the rules? This batter is letting one of his hosts, who happens to be the umpire, hear about it. Maybe a bad called third strike? What makes boys boys? Stealing signs, throwing darts, comics, playing with army men, and yeah, ball. Here are eight guys ready to play, yet waiting on the ninth to finish his yard duty. And notice he's in uniform, so as soon as he's done, he's off to the ballpark with his teammates. Beautiful wide shot of Yankee Stadium at night. The Bob Feller article is about his barnstorming tour and other money-making ventures the 28-year-old was coming up with. There were lots of fears from Major League Baseball owners at the time, fearing he was going to take a lot of business away from them. The Post moved up to a 15 cent cover by 1948. And since you're already in the middle of laundry, The photograph that this painting was based on was taken during a Cubs-Braves doubleheader. In the dugout, from left to right, Bob Rush, manager Charlie Grimm, Al Walker, and all-star Johnny Schmitz. The Cubs, playing away from home, not in the greatest of spirits. They didn't have a very good season in 1948. They wound up finishing 18 games in back of the National League champion Boston Braves. This picture is also known as Three Umpires, or Bottom of the Sixth. We're in Ebbets Field. The umpires are Larry Getz, Beans Reardon, and Lou Jorda. The Dodgers coach in the background is Kyle Sukforth, and the Pirates manager, Bill Meyer. Of course, Clyde is saying that he sees the clouds breaking up and we should continue. He's only down 1-0. Another shot of fans trying to grab that home run ball. Still wearing straw hats in 1950, and this one looks like it's going to go out. The outfielder doesn't seem to be leaping for it. And not all the fans want to really go for it. See the gentleman down in front, don't want to get bopped in the head. This seems like a late Sunday afternoon. The whole family is visiting, watching the game. Maybe taking part in some of it before going to supper. Americana at its finest. The mountain setting in the back and colors of flowers add to the charm of these two practicing their form. Could they be siblings? It's a busy day for this young man. We've got cereal and comics, school, daydreaming, lots of time with ball, then more time with the girls. Before going home, having supper, doing your homework, starting it all over again tomorrow. In 1952, the Yankees met the Dodgers in the World Series. And here we see some line workers in good position for a radio reception. Yes, kids, there was actually World Series games during the day. In 1954, Stan the Man Musial had an amazing All-Star season, leading the National League in doubles and runs scored. The colors, the kids hanging out, the bat rack, glove on the ground, Stan's uniform, such an awesome cover.
Well, we have a bit of a problem here because, see, this is our home plate and we're kind of in the middle of a game, so please, mister. Nineteen fifty four was the famous World Series between the New York Giants and Cleveland Indians. Willie Mays making that catch in game one off thick words. But no matter where you go here, you can always get an update to the game. 